Good morning, everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? All right. So as we uh, make our way to our seats, uh, let's, let's get started. And, and the goal for today will certainly be to stay on time and maybe even try to stay ahead of time if we can. Uh, my name is Ashish John. I'm the faculty director of the Harvard Global Health Institute. Uh, and I'm thrilled that you all uh, made it here today. We're uh, looking forward to what I think will be a, a very important day of a lot of hard work. Um, I know it's, a, it's a, a difficult day as well. I just want to take 30 seconds to acknowledge what I think a lot of us are feeling after uh, the horrendous uh, events of this past weekend in Orlando. And I think um, despite that, I think we have to understand that the work has to go on and, and we have a lot of work ahead of us. And uh, as we reflect on, uh, I think, on what happened this past weekend, um, one of the things that we can try to do today is to try to make progress on some of these very important issues that bring us together and, and bind us together. Um, so before I get into what today is going to be uh, about, I want to actually just take 30 seconds and introduce our first sort of welcoming speaker, uh, Dean Martha Minow, uh, somebody who doesn't need a lot of introductions, and I won't make it a long one, but I'll say very quickly a couple of things. Um, she's not only the dean of the faculty of Harvard Law School, she's an expert on human rights, uh, I think has been an extraordinary both scholar and advocate uh, for issues uh, for people who are underprivileged and often disenfranchised. Um, beyond being a great scholar, I think there is broad consensus in the Harvard community uh, that she has been an extraordinary leader of the Harvard Law School at a time when there have been some challenges at the law school. Uh, and her leadership uh, and her steadfast vision has been uh, something that I think we've all appreciated. So uh, without further ado, Dean Minow, thank you for coming. Well, thank you for that very generous introduction. Uh, once before I was dean, I did go to a restroom at another university, and there was a by the, the hot air machine was a little sign that said, press here for message from provost. So I always think hard about uh, any speaking engagement, and I will be unbelievably brief. On the other hand, I think this topic is so important. Um, I think, um, again, in the light of the events of, of yesterday, I was thinking about a moment in the movie Silkwood uh, where the uh, victim of exposure to radioactivity is explaining this problem to her boyfriend. And he says, just give me a problem I can solve. Um, Actually, I think you are assembled here today to deal with a problem that can be solved. It's a hard one, but I, as I look around, and the people in the room that I know have the capacity, I think, to do something extraordinary, and the people who I don't know, I know where you're from, and I know that this meeting is an unusual opportunity to bring people together from different sectors, uh, different points of view, different ideas, and that's why I have great confidence that this will be a very meaningful event. It did lead me to look up the meaning of the word access in the dictionary. Access comes from a medieval term meaning approach, which is also defined as being near. It's a more modern meaning to say that access involves a right or an authority to use something. And what I hope you do today and in your work together is make that transition from the medieval idea to the modern idea. Uh, and I, again, have great confidence that real progress will be made. The collaborations uh, across academia, industry, civil society, philanthropy, uh, the support from the Berkman Center Global Access project, the Office of the President, the Provost Initiative, actually to get different parts of Harvard working together. If we did that, you can do anything. Thank you, and best wishes. Thank you, Dean Minow. Um, brief, but very much to the point. And I, indeed, if we can get different parts of Harvard to work together, there's no shortage of what we can accomplish. Um, so let me just take uh, about two minutes and, and kind of frame where we are, wh what brings us together today. And then I'm going to turn right over to uh, Quentin Palfrey, who's going to moderate the first session. But I think as we start, I think we have to acknowledge the tension that brings us here. Right? There is a tension, uh, a tension of two communities who feel very strongly and deeply about what at times feels like competing set of ideas. One set of ideas. Um, is the real 
and practical need for more innovation. More innovation for treating diseases, more innovation for diagnostic tests. And innovation fundamentally is expensive. It costs a lot of money. And there is no shortcut that we know of to make innovation happen without resources. That, I think, is a very important part of the, of the uh, agenda and very important part of what drives attention. Because the second part, of course, the second opposing, what feels at times like opposing factors, is that there is a very large proportion of the world's population that can't afford to pay for the innovation. That just can't afford it. Doesn't have the resources. Uh, and so the idea that innovation would only accrue and only benefit those who could afford to pay for it is an idea that we feel is both from a moral and, and uh, economic and intellectual perspective uh, unsustainable. And I think that is the tension that brings us here today. I think in, in putting this together, in, the, in putting together the uh, background work that Quentin Terry Fisher, Quentin Palfrey Terry Fisher have done, what they have tried to argue and what I at, at the Global Health Institute, I think all of us believe, is that we have to move forward beyond this tension, beyond this point of contention that we get into, and find practical solutions that both spur on innovation and yet ensure that there is broad access to that innovation so the whole world benefits from it. And that, I think, is the purpose of what brings us together. So we have a pretty rich agenda. And let me just lay out in very broad terms what we have. Uh, the morning session uh, is really going to be about identifying and discussing concrete best practices. There are things that we already know uh, how to do and what to do, and we have to figure out how to replicate those. We have to figure out how to scale them up. And that is going to be, I think, a very important part of the day. And in the afternoon, we're going to try to think outside the box, get beyond those concrete examples, and think about what else we can do, where else we can go, how else we can push this envelope. We are not going to solve these issues today, but I think um, as we were speaking just before this session started with Dean Minow, and we were discussing what a win looks like, one of those wins is if we feel like we've taken a step forward in the conversation, if we have moved the ball forward, I think all of us will feel like today was a win. So that's, in, in a big picture way, the goal uh, I am very excited about today. So thank you all for making the journey uh, to come here. Um, I think we should just go ahead and get started with the first panel. Let me introduce once Quentin and the rest of the panel. Why don't you guys come up? And Quentin, do you want to introduce the panelists? I'll have you do that. But um, I want to just actually, as you come up, one more quick thing. I want to uh, acknowledge three people, uh, Molly, Ebba, and Christine, who did really the bulk uh, of the work in getting everybody here. So let's take 10 seconds and give them a round of applause. All right, I, with that, I will turn it over to my uh, colleague and compatriot uh, and partner in crime, Quentin Palfrey. Quentin, thank you for organizing today. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ashish.